שלום, dear friends. The book of Isaiah is considered among the world's greatest works of religious literature. Thus, the book of Isaiah is one of the most extensively studied and debated books among the prophets. In Judaism, it supplies nearly half the readings from the prophets in the synagogue liturgy. In Christianity, its importance is evident since this is the most quoted book in the New Testament. The Christian confession of Jesus as the Messiah has been shaped significantly by the book of Isaiah. No wonder the early theologians of the church rightly called Isaiah as the fifth gospel or the gospel within the Old Testament. Who is this Isaiah? Isaiah was the most prominent of all the 8th century BC prophets, commonly known as the pre-exilic prophets. He was born and brought up in Jerusalem and he belonged to an aristocratic family that was very close to the royal houses. He was married to a prophetess and had two children and the children bore symbolic names as we saw in the case of the children of Hosea. His ministry lasted four decades and corresponded to the period of four kings mentioned at the beginning of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah's style of writing and the mode of communication. Isaiah is considered as the eagle among the prophets. And because of the high quality of his writing, he uses several literary forms, prose, poetry, warnings, prophetic oracles, hymns, prayers, imagery, metaphors, proverbs, parables, riddles, and lamentation. He was very creative in communicating his message, even to the extent of walking around naked in order to give a prophetic message, namely, the people will be carried into exile. Today, the scholars are of unanimous opinion that the entire book of Isaiah is a composite work that reflects three different periods of Jerusalem's history. Therefore, they accept multiple authorship for the book. The book is generally divided into 1st Isaiah or Proto-Isaiah chapters 1 to 39, 2nd Isaiah chapters 40 to 55 written after the destruction of Jerusalem in 587 by the Babylonians and the third Isaiah chapters 56 to 66 written after the return from the exile of Babylon. We shall now concentrate on the first part of this book which is believed to be coming directly from the prophet Isaiah of Jerusalem. The materials in this section are from Assyrian period. The historical background to the book Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 says that he prophesied during the years of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. And these were troubling times marked by the constant threat of attack from Assyria. The preaching of uh, Isaiah is based very much 
on the profound experience of the vision that he received and which is narrated in chapter 6. The contents. Chapter 1 has a general introduction. In fact, this is an introduction to the entire book of Isaiah. Chapters 2 to 12 constitute oracles against Jerusalem and Judah. Chapters 13 to 23, oracles against nations. 28 to 33, oracles against Judah and Jerusalem again. And 34 to 35, called Little Apocalypse. And finally, 36 to 39, an appendix with narratives. We shall now consider some of the special features in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah condemned the social, political and economic system of the kingdom of Judah because it created two-tiered society made up of the very rich and very poor. The rich acquired and maintained their position in Judahite society by taking advantage of the poor. What was even worse was that the temple and the liturgy were used to assure the oppressors that God would continue to protect Judah despite its manifest failure to maintain a community of justice. Expressions like your country lies waste, your cities are burned with fire show that the prophet believed that the aggressively militaristic Assyrian Empire was God's instrument of judgment on the kingdom of Judah. The oft-quoted song of the vineyard in chapter 5, 1 to 7 is referred to by Jesus in Matthew chapter 21. Yahweh had expected to yield good grapes, but wild grapes in all it yielded. Yahweh had expected justice, but so bloodshed. Righteousness, but violence. Again, Isaiah declares seven woes against those who confiscate the poor and the people's houses. Another important message that we receive is the, uh, that Isaiah was against formalism in religion. Cult that is not ex an expression of one's life is meaningless. One cannot stretch out one's hand to commit murder and then stretch them out before Yahweh in prayer. It's really an irony. The most celebrated text in Isaiah is what we call the Immanuel prophecy. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall call him Immanuel. Matthew the evangelist considers the arrival of Jesus the Messiah as the fulfillment of this Isaiah prophecy. We will just see a few important messages that we draw from the book. First of all, the Lord is holy. He is the supreme one and he is in absolute and total control. The expression, the holy one of Israel is found 13 times in this section of chapters 1 to 39. Secondly, God punishes all forms of misbehavior. There is a strong condemnation of immorality and idolatry. Sacrifice has no automatic effect. He denounces the altar, incense and feast days when they are all done without sincerity. But finally, the good news is that even when God punishes, there will always be a remnant that will continue to actualize the promises made to God. 
and we conclude with that famous uh, expression that God is Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah enumerates the qualities of this Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. May we experience that shalom, the peace that is offered to us by this prince of peace. Wish all of you a very happy Christmas. Shalom and God be with you. Thank you.